So we're in the new bakery, and so with new equipment comes new challenges, even though we're doing the same old thing. Um, we have an opportunity to improve. And uh, sometimes that involves making some mistakes or just kind of trudging on through some, some changes. So we have been experiencing a little bit of changes with our sourdough tank and Harriet, our starter, um, that have changed some of the consistency of some of our breads. So we've been able to mitigate many so far, but we haven't done baguettes. Uh, like we save those for the weekends typically, um, and we make a lot. <laughs> so this has been kind of a frustrating experience because with the new inoculation of our sourdough starter, um, it's been a wetter starter so that it can filter through the tank and mix a little bit more evenly um, and pour out. When we first did our regular uh, 2000, or sorry, 2K, 4K, 4K, so 2000 inoculation, 4,000 water and flour. It was really thick coming out of the tank, which I think John's gonna play with it maybe a little bit later so you can get, see what that looks like. Um, but we were hand mixing before and that was just the good thing, a good ratio for us. Now that we have to pour through a tank, a little bit watery is better. But we changed the sourdough starter, didn't necessarily change the recipes in the same ratio. So a lot of these baguettes that I'm working with today are really wet. Something's off when the dough is sticking to my hands instead of to itself and the table. Um, it reminds me of kind of like when we first started. When you first start baking, you're gonna have sticky hands. There's no way to get around that. The dough will stick to you. Don't look at me for an example. Just get in tune with your with the dough and how it feels, how it changes. There's two ways to like deal with the stickiness. I am dealing with it this time with flour. That's just because I find the dough to be super wet, so the extra flour is going to help balance that out. And the other way is with water, which I actually was using earlier. Water is nice because it will like clean your table as you go. <laughs> but um, it's gonna add hydration to my dough and I don't really want that this time. We have a habit of covering all of our loaves because back in the days before we even had to walk in in the garage, a walk-in, um, we were throwing all of our loaves in a reach-in with, um, that had speed racks in there and the reach-ins are smaller and have a lot, have the fans blowing like directly in there. It's a smaller space. So it, it didn't retain as much, and we're like opening and closing very often. So it didn't retain as much of that natural moisture that's in the dough. It didn't like, has kind of like a cool box effect. Like it just, or a, like a steam effect almost. Um, so we are, got in the habit ever since then to cover our loaves or have some sort of humidity in, the, in our cool spaces. These doughs and this walk-in, I feel like it doesn't get as dry in there because there's so much space and the dough just kind of hangs on to it or since we're not walking in and out as often, it's it's just keeping all that uh, moisture in there. And the um, covers were just like wet. They were like dripping onto the floor, the condensation. So I'm glad it caught that so that we didn't end up in a pretty bad space today. But I'm used to a little bit more tension in the dough. This dough has, doesn't have, it has a little bit of tension from my pre-shape which was also really hard. You'll see when I divide, like it's soupy in there. So taking it even off of the divider is a little difficult. Um, anyway, so between all the changes that we're making, the dough that I found this morning wasn't as 
cold and hard as I'm used to. It was really bubbly and um, had grown quite a bit. So really gassy, I would say. Um, so that made it a little bit harder because it's, again, that steam like effect, like the, it's growing, that gas is releasing and it's like creating its own little ecosystem in there. So before I could even throw it in the divider, I had to degas it a little bit. If there's too many bubbles, the divider won't divide evenly. And Baguette really likes, it benefits from a table rest. So I pre-shaped them into these little logs. And now I'm kind of doing a little routine that I have to build a little bit of tension individually. So I'll get it to this point and then I'll just kind of let it rest because I just built tension in there. If I want to ex extend it, it's going to either tear on me or really pull back. So I kind of let it sit there and then bring it back to the table. So I accidentally added tension again to this one and you'll see like if I try to extend it, it's just going back to where it wants to go. So I'm going to have to set this guy back. This one, it's been sitting here for a minute and I'm gonna try to just gently push against the table to extend it. And when you're doing this, be mindful of creating the same width throughout. So if you have any spots with bubbles, you wanna just tuck them in you'll see like this is at its end, right? Because I, I tried to tension it and extend it and it's just slowly going back. Luckily, I'm pretty much where I need to be, so I'm just gonna pick it up. Rice flour and stick it on my dish. But you'll see like the skin is even a little bit less um, strong, so Whereas before I used to let it stick to the table and it could just be that this is a new table, but it would kind of stick more to itself. But you see here, it's sticking more to the table. What I want it to do is kind of roll in on itself, but it's coming apart down here. But I'm just gonna tuck it back in and accept that this is where it's at today. <laughs> You can't come to the bakery with expectations ever. Or you will be disappointed with sourdough. Because every day is different and today is a challenging day. So where I would normally find this to be a calming activity, it's a little stressful today. But it's a good reminder to stay mindful. Another way to sort of mitigate this um, is I could fold the bulk dough before I divide it. Um, I could also have pre-shaped a little bit differently. Like with these pre-shapes, I kind of just take it out of there and roll it up. Um, I could have made more of a ball, kind of like a bowl, and let that sit. Um, and then turn it into a log. So it's kind of like getting two folds. First timers when they're shaping will tend to like really like press the dough and that's not what I'm doing at all. It, it may look like it because I rest my hands here just for a little extra support, but I'm really just scooting it on the table. And I'm only focusing on the bottom of the log. And I'm not really pressing down at all until I get to the ends. to round them out there we go so like I said it's stretching back that's when I know it's done because they're gonna get a little bit they're gonna grow in tension but also grow in like when I move it around to bake it later it's gonna be easier to just extend when I put it down so we're in a transition here between basically the last bin of a 48 hour cold bulk 
and the first spin of a 24 hour cold bulk, you can see the difference, the same amount of weight in these bins. You can see the difference in rise over another 24 hours in the walk-in. So the idea that sourdough is completely dormant in the upper 30s is obviously not true because this dough is further along. Will we hold to a 48 hour fermentation? Time will tell. Um, right now, that's what we're trying on the baguettes uh, and just seeing how it goes. So this is extremely soft dough though, which means like if we wanna to hold to a 48 hour fermentation, we might need to reduce the hydration or make or change the inoculation rate of this. Uh, so there's, there's a ton of things we can do we don't like how soft it is because shaping it is a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, meaning, a nightmare meaning like only the most skilled baguette hands can handle it. So that's pretty much Amanda only at, at this point. Uh, so, but I'm good enough at dividing, so I'll at least divide for her. You can see it's like, it's getting stringy on the other side, which in the past has only really equated to almost over fermentation. We'll see how the second bin divides, which is, you know, 24 hours younger. I've got a dirty bin pile down here, stacking up, ready for washing later on. I'm gonna flour the top, which will help prevent it from sticking to the top, and then try to more evenly distribute it in the divider. Yikes, this is uh, something else. We've had that happening to a number of products, some challenges with English muffins yesterday, with how far along they were. It all sort of points to how happy Harriet is. Uh, probably a little too happy though this batch because it's so tough to work with. Definitely feel for Amanda. That's to then shape all this. The entire experience of baking that we've had is, you know, useful in moments of transition. The, whether it be seasonal change, like between uh, winter and summer, if if your ambient situation is changing in temperature, meaning like... Or humidity meaning you know, it's more or less humid, it's more or less uh, warm in your actual space, that's going to have an impact without a doubt on, on your baking. Uh, but you know, it, it scales all the way up to changing equipment or changing a facility as a whole. Uh, right now we're definitely in a position where we're uh, sort of reestablishing our, our rhythm, uh, our rule set because the products here are gonna perform a little bit differently. And we have to be mindful of a lot of different things. Uh, it, beginning, I think, with our sourdough starter. So, you know, we've been playing with it in the supercharged mode, but we also have to kind of watch it daily. We're keeping a backup of hand-mixed Harriet, uh, just in case we have to go backwards because we're sort of in uncharted waters right now with how yeah, supercharged our starter is in this fermentation tank. Uh, and we're seeing it across our product line from the exploding sandwich loaves, which are about to come out of the oven, to these uh, very well, uh, very, very far along fermented uh, baguettes to the giant loaves that uh, we baked this morning. Everything's coming out larger. Uh, and you know, further along in its fermentation, which is, it might be an excellent thing. In other words, it might like improve our overall product quality, but we have to be careful not to, I guess, lock ourselves out of the process of production because the further along things go fermentation wise, there's a fine line there where it gets to be a little bit harder to work with, with those things. Baking is not mindless work. Uh, I think a lot of, not a lot, but there's some number of people who come in here thinking like this is going to be easy. It's not. You know, every day is different. Every day is a challenge. Every day um, you have to be, have an, 
open eyes and your mind has to be on and you have to be able to use your powers of observation to make the necessary changes. Um, to me, a successful baker in our bakery or any sourdough bakery is somebody who can adapt because they've been watching. You know, it's like the things that are not said that they're picking up on. So I actually called the people that I bought this oven from because we're like, hey, the timer is not going off at the end of the bake. It's going off at other times, like the one minute warning, all these other transitions, but we're not getting that beep at the end of the bake. And it's kind of like a scary thing because you don't want to over bake things inadvertently because you walk away and you don't have a timer going. Uh, we realized in this case it was our bad because the bake is actually not done right at the time that the timer is exhausted. The rack has to actually drop. So it first has to rotate into like a fixed position and drop so you can basically uh, unhook the rack. I'm about to do kind of a U-turn and so I'm just preparing the area. So now see it's zero and it's not it's not going off the timer and so we thought that was some sort of a flaw. Uh, but it turns out that we were just being impatient now with this process of just slowly lowering the rack into position and getting to the point that it's truly done. Uh, in this case, it's still finishing and dropping that rack down. And there it goes. So just needed to wait long enough. You also have to get used to that noise. And I'm gonna try to tuck this away from anyone walking. It's pretty hot right now. These need to be turned over relatively quickly after the bake, otherwise they collapse. Are they one unit now? Oh my God. Yeah, one unit. A really nice bake to them. They're obviously kissing, which you know, is the term that's used when they're kind of stuck together. I don't think that it's a compromise necessarily in this loaf. The question will be how they slice up, because they are giant. The, by far the largest sandwich breads that I can remember us producing. This one collapsed. These are going to be questionable, like we might they might not be what people are expecting on the inside. We'll see. I'm, I'm expecting the, that, the, that the loaf itself will have separated from the roof a little bit. We'll see. All right, the 24-hour baguette. Still sticky. Yeah, typically you don't want the bin coming out looking like this. It's, you, it's not what we're going for. Our sourdough coming out of the bin doesn't look like that. I don't really mind the degassing right now because this dough has so much life that it's going to get its fermentation sites rebuilt, even in the cold, it seems. Harriet is just reaching her full potential. <laughs> I mean, I'm dialing her back today. There's no questions. It's too much. <laughs> 